first. You gotta go across. Okay, you wanna go first? Yes. Since you're so nervous. I'm not nervous. This is about you right now. It's not about me. So I'm, I'm gonna go first. <laughs> Lead the way. Oh, hold on, hold on. Are you comfortable? I feel great. Are you, you ready? Are you ready? Yes, let's get to work. <laughs> Are you the greatest of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the greatest of all time. Um, I think I played 10 years. Um, I think in my era, I would say, for my era, yes, but you know, everybody there was different. So. Um, you got guys that was great that I looked up to, like um, Ray Lewis, mm -hmm. that was the greatest at his time. Paul Malu, Pittsburgh guy. Um, Lawrence Taylor, you know, it's different areas that, you know, you can't, it's hard to say that because the game changed so much. So I think in the time I played, I think um, I held my own and, and did what I did to, you know, help change the game. So I like it. I have to agree. So just kind of take me through, um, not everybody knows your life story. Yeah. Not everybody knows Aaron Donald, the human being outside of NFL. Um, but when you started playing football from childhood, through high school, through college, all the way into the pros, just kind of give me a little journey. So born and raised in Pittsburgh, we in my childhood home. Well, I probably moved here when I was about three, four years old. Um, been playing football since I was five or six years old. Started playing when I was five. Um, I actually quit when I was five. First position I ever played was center. Um, and then obviously um, I quit that year when I came back when I was six years old and um, played fullback, linebacker pretty much a lot of my career. I always wanted to be a linebacker. Um, so um, growing up, um, a quiet kid, didn't speak much, had an older brother, older sister that, you know, they had to speak for me. And, you know, if I needed to ask my dad something, ask my mom something, I was quiet. And, my dad used to always tell me, um, speak up. If you don't ever speak up, and nobody will never know what's on your mind. So, um, you know, football was always a way for me to express myself, um, get out of my comfort zone. Um, so, you know, a quiet kid, you know, off the field, on the field, show a lot of emotions. Um, you know, I, I, we got a family, a football family, um, you know. So it's like, so from, as a kid growing up, playing little league football, you always dream about playing in the NFL, right? So, um, you know, you, you have since you, you you do good things as a kid growing up, and then you get to the high school level. I'm actually trying to play linebacker, but you know, uh, they're like, nah, you you gonna play D line. So uh, my dad always told me D line was my God given gift, you know. But I always thought D line was like the fat guy position. I didn't want to never be called, <laughs> considered the fat guy. So um, you know, to look back at it, you know, I think I made a good decision to, to stand with D line. Um, had some a lot of success in high school. Um, my D-line coach, DeMond Gibson, Coach Gibbs, we still talk to this day. Um, got a great relationship with him. He taught me a lot of things in um, high school to help me dominate, you know. But again, when it was time to get the scholarships, didn't have too many offers. We had Pitt, um, I think Toledo and Akron, you know. A lot of teams, a lot of schools felt like I was undersized for my position. Um, didn't think I'd be able to translate what I did in high school to college. And they was asking, do you think I can get the 300 pounds and things like that? But, um, you know. It take one school to believe in you, and, and, and Pitt was that school for me in my hometown where I was born and raised at. Um, so, you know, full scholarship at Pitt. Um, chose to go there, um, work my butt off to, you know, have a lot of success there, and mm -hmm. um, got drafted to the St. Louis Rams. So. so before we get into the draft with the Rams, um, in your college career, did you ever kind of think about Am I gonna go into the league? How am I playing? Am I being recognized? Just what was that like? So my true freshman year, so I actually came to school late. So I was a guy that had to pass my SAT or ACT test. So it took a while. I ended up passing the last test. So um, I ended up, I had to, my dad found the trainer out here, Dwayne Brown. Um, ended up being my trainer that trained me for the rest of my life. Um, in 12th grade, um, I would work with him to get, get myself conditioned. I, I lift weights with my dad. Um, you know, to prepare myself because, you know, while all my other peers was already starting college and experiencing that, I was still waiting and trying to pass the test to see if I even, you know, got to go to JUCO or if I get to go to college right away. So um, I started August 5th, the day of camp, and I went down there in great shape. Um, didn't start my freshman year. Felt like I, I should have started, but I think it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because 
Um, Cause it just showed me that I, I got to keep working. My whole life playing football, I was always the guy. You know, I was always a starter. And now, you know, coming into a Division One college, I felt like I dominated right away coming in late. But um, it didn't play out how I thought it would play out. And, and you know, I, there was games I played five snaps. There was games I played fifteen snaps. But um, I just kept working. It, it pushed me and motivated me to, um, you know, to, to continue to just work with my craft, get to where I needed to be as a player. Um, came back my sophomore year was probably you know my first big year in college had some success um, my junior year was a year that you know let me rewind back some so my sophomore year was my first big year in college so you know I, I started feeling myself a little bit start enjoying college a lot more people was, they would know me on campus so I, I would feel like I, I kind of felt like I kind of um, got a little little satisfied and my junior year was a good year but it wasn't a year that I, I could have did a lot better you know I felt like I didn't put the body at work in the same way I did my sophomore year and, and you know I went from 10 sacks to six sacks that year so um, I thought about leaving early because I had my daughter um, got my grade back I think I got like a, a, a like a fourth or fifth round grade and I I was upset about it but I'm I gotta provide um, I had a conversation with my dad in this house right in the um, dining room I sat there and talked and I told him um, I'm gonna come back for my senior year because I want to be all American he was like you're making grown man decisions now, you know, and you got to stand on that. And I came back more motivated than ever. Um, we'll work out with my, my trainer, Dwayne Brown. On any day we head off, I'll be with my guy training. Um, and the film, when it came to the film study, I was uh, nonstop in the film room. I'd be there an hour early. Um, I, would, I would watch film by myself. I would pick about four chairs together, take a nap before meetings and um, get ready for practice. And, you know, and that just became my routine. Um, I would watch film with my um, coach. My D-line coach, Coach Notes, he taught me how to watch film, how to break down film, how to study my opponent to play faster. And um, once I started to do that, my senior year, it was like, you know, it was lights out from there. I kind of, you know, um, you know, I, I had my best year yet, you know, ended up winning a bunch of awards and, um, you know, having a lot of success. But again, it was back, I don't think he's the biggest guy. I don't think what you did in college is going to translate to the NFL. So it was always that that same that same thing being said. Then you go to the Senior Bowl, um, you dominate. It's like okay, okay, maybe he 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 maybe he can do that, but I, I don't know. Um, you go to the combat, you run a four six. Now everybody like okay, maybe I'm gonna take a chance <laughs> on this guy now. So, um, but I I I remember visiting the St. Louis Rams coach Wolf. I remember him bringing me to his office and just praising me, some talking about how much he want me here. I remember um, they was all in the meeting room. I remember Wall walked me in there, bust the door open, poof. I remember all the it was um Coach Fish and last everybody in there in like like a, a draft meeting. Yeah. I remember Johnny Manzay on the screen. And they like he remember Coach Wall like, this is Aaron Donald, this is the kid that's gonna be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, how you doing? It was, it was super <laughs> awkward, but you know, that was my introduction to everybody. And he told me if I was there at 13, they was gonna draft me. But I'm like, I did my homework on them. I said they had Walt Rob Quinn had just had 19 and a half sacks. They had um, Michael Brockers, first round pick, Big Langford, um, Kendall, yeah. Chris Long, another first round pick, Eugene Sims, um, Will Hayes, with a bunch of guys that was already a pretty good team, good D line. I'm like, they ain't gonna draft me. I kind of thought I was gonna go to even Dallas or um, Chicago Bears because I did. I started talking to the papers. I thought I would, I would end up going there, but um, got the 13. Got a call from Fish and. Um, he, they, he told me if I was there at 13, they was going to take me and I got drafted. Yeah. So. so that was May 8th, 2014, 13th pick of the NFL draft yes. to the St. Louis Rams at the time. Yes. How did that feel? It was a dream come true. You got to think, um, playing football since you was five or six years old, running around the neighborhood playing football, you always said, um, I want to go to the NFL. You right. know, when, when you're in school, you got to write what, you, what your career is. You you pick NFL player to teach you like that's what everybody want to do. Let's 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 be real, more realistic, you know. And but that was my dream. That's what I wanted. Um, so to be able to get drafted and, and share that with my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my cousins, like everybody that played a part of helping me be who I am, and you know, get to hug my brother, cry with my brother, cry with my dad, cry with my mom, and, and share that moment with them. It was it was it was um, it was special. It was it was super special. Um, and like I told my brother when we was in that bed from crying. Um, it's time to work. Let's be great now. Oh um, man, I got there and, and we went to work. Um, so you oftentimes talk about obviously your parents, um, but a lot of times you talk about the male figures in your life. Mm -hmm. um, you know, 
kind of environments that they don't always have the best role models in their parents, yeah. the best role models in their siblings. Um, you always talk about how that plays a major part. People don't always know how big of a family man you are, how much you love your family. Yeah. Um, so what does that mean to you to be able to share a lot of these moments along your career with your parents that raised you, your brother, your sister, you know, just everybody. I think that's one of the best parts of my career, you know, having the success I had from even from a kid to high school to college to the pros, it was always the God there made my mom and my dad proud, you know. I, I, so I was like, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't try to make you cry, yeah, but, but I knew it was going to happen. Yeah, but it, it was like, when I if I played football, it wasn't what everybody else thought. I wanted to know what my dad thought what I did. Mm -hmm. Like, if my, if my dad praised me and told me how... <laughs> <laughs> okay. I need some tissue real quick. You want to come sit on my lap? <laughs> Golly, man. Sorry. Goddamn. My bad. Thank you, please. Don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> there, there might be a few more. Golly. Big Bloom, you need some? <laughs> but it, it was always, you know, it wasn't what everybody else thought. You know, I, I was, if my dad was to say, you did a good, a great job and you did what you, I didn't care what nobody else said. Like my dad always said, if he love it, if he like it, everybody else is going to love it. Um, and, you know, from... Low league to high school to college to the pros. That's always what it was to me. You know, if my dad called me and told me how I did in the game, I didn't care what nobody else thought. I, I was good. So um, it mean the world to share the moments like that with my parents, with my brother, my sister. Um, then I go come into a man and, and create my own and have kids and be able to share that with them. Um, there's, there's no better feeling than that alone. So. <laughs> okay, so let's let's get into the draft. I know sometimes guys get asked, do you remember the 12 people that came before you? Do you remember everybody? No, I, I don't. I really don't. Um, I'm going to pull it up right here. I have it. I <laughs> have it. I do, but I want to see if you can, if you remember any. Um, I know Ebron went to Detroit. I thought I would go to De possibly go to Detroit. I think they was at um, 10, Hold on. I believe. <clears throat> Uh, I think o Odell went to the New York Giants at 12. Yep, he was right um, before you. Yeah. Um, Do you remember who was one that year? Clowney. Yep. Yeah, Clowney. Um, you remember who was two? No, I, no, I think it was Officer Lyman. Yes. Um, Titans. No. No. G-Rob. Oh, great. Yeah. Yes. St. Louis. That's what I was yeah, like, come yeah. on, man. So you know I, that. I just put you on the spot. But yeah, geez. but I don't know everybody. I remember, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like mad. I was just like, wait, yeah, my turn. Like, once I get there, I'm there. And yes. I just wanted to get in the door. So yeah. I really didn't care if it was early or what it was. I just wanted to want somebody that wanted me and give me an opportunity um, to be able to do what I do. And I felt like I went to a, a team that was like the perfect fit for me, you know, it, it was with a great defensive line coach, a great D-line room to the point where, you know, I remember in OTAs, I was in there in film, watching film by myself early. I remember Coach Wolf <clears throat> came in, he was erasing the board when I'm watching film. He's like, you can just keep watching film, I'm watching <laughs> film. And he looked back at me, he said, he looked at me, he said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be talking a lot in this meeting room, I'm gonna be teaching a lot of guys a lot of things, but I want you to listen to nothing I say. I just want you to go out there and play, do the same thing you did in college, I wanna learn from you. Mm -hmm. As a as a rookie and and you got a D a D line coach telling you, just play football, do what you want, just make plays. I don't care if you jump out your gap, just make plays. The same whatever you did in college, just do that now. Right. You know how much confidence that was to me to just go out there and just play and just play free. Yeah. Um, and then I, I got a great group around me. You got Robert Quinn, you got uh, Michael Brockers, you got Kendall, you got um, Chris Long, Will Hay, Eugene Sims. Like I had a, a great group that always like. That believed in me right away. That like you, you gonna be special, you know. And as a kid, you, as a young guy, you like okay, like you, you don't know what that's gonna be. But right. they seen it early, and like for guys and, and your coaches and your teammates to believe in you right away like that, it's like it's like it's, it's motivation and it's confidence that you get right away to the point where you be like, all right, I can do this, you know. So, when did you realize you were special? Um, <clears throat> be honest with you, I, I felt like I dominated OTAs my rookie year. I had an amazing camp. 
Um, my first game against the Vikings, uh, we played the Vikings. That's when um, um, Peterson was it might. Like, I got to get the play. I remember watching him playing with a beat. I get to get to try to tackle this guy. And I remember the first time I was in there, <clears throat> getting my stands. I see I see they, I see a light stand, so I know the guard's pulling. I just shoot it. Pew! Boom! Met him in the backfield, slammed him down for like a six, seven-yard loss. I was like, oh, yeah, I can do this. And I, from there, it was like confidence right away, you know, because um, I was able to perform and make big plays early in my career. My first NFL game, I was already making TFLs. And, same plays I was making in college to the point where it was just confidence right away to the point where, like, uh, if I keep doing what I'm doing, keep learning, keep getting better, I think, you know, I could be a, a force in this league. So, mm -hmm. Okay, so you find out the St. Louis Rams <coughs> are becoming the Los Angeles Rams. The team moves out to L.A. What was that transition like for you? Was it challenging? Was it weird? Was it different? You know, you're essentially – Pissing some people off, you're yeah. making some people happy. You're talking about uh, potentially a brand new fan base coming in. They may have already been Rams fans. They may have been fans of yours, maybe not. But what was that transition like? Uh, I ain't know what to think because you got there. I'm from Pittsburgh, right. and Pittsburgh and St. Louis ain't too far off. And yeah. then you said you're going to Los Angeles, the big city, big like, market. All the act, like you know, L.A. I'm yes. like, I, I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do out there. <laughs> like, I, it's just, it's, you know what I'm saying, but. Uh, we get out there, you obviously, you know, um, you see a different world, right? So, um, you know, you, you get nervous at first, and then you grow to love it, right? So, I um, had an opportunity to meet a lot of good people, have a lot of good opportunities um, off the field. As far as marketing-wise, there was a lot better. So, um, put a bigger smile on my face once <laughs> I started seeing that, too. But, um, you know, it ended up being, being, at first, a nervous thing, but it ended up being a great thing at the end of the day, you know? Been there eight years now. I'm going on nine years, so um, you know that's home now. You know that's home, and um, you know I'm happy that the move happened how it happened. Obviously, I love St. Louis. I love all the fans that was there that supported us, that supported me um, early in my career. But um, was able to you know transition and go to Los Angeles and, and create a fan base there, and um, a great fan base that helped us you know do a lot of great things there. So. So how do you stay grounded through all that? Going into a big market where sometimes a lot of guys go in, they get overwhelmed, they've got all kinds of distractions mm -hmm. and all of these things that take their, their mind away from, in, in your mind, the number one focus, which is football. So how do you work through that? And at that time, you're still young in your career, yeah. but you're a leader in the locker room. So potentially being a leader and taking other rookies under your belt and and as they're coming out there and they're bright eyed well, you know for me it was like my dad always told me always stay true to yourself right so uh, that's a, I'm, I'm i'm always going to just be me um, no matter who i am who people's how they see me what i make uh, I'm, I'm just Aaron at the end of the day the same guy always been obviously you get older you mature but i'm still the same person and i just i just never let my surroundings or what i accomplished or what i got change who i am so it was always the same mindset to work, keep working, and to be a productive player that trying to, um, you know, do great things and, and help my team to win. And, and that was my mindset. That's how you got to think. I started working out when I was 12 years old, mm -hmm. and my dad always told me, um, <clears throat> working out, you, it's gonna, you're going to see a change in your body. And ain't going to just change the way what you do in the weight room. It's going to change in your everyday life. And I'm like, all right, Dad. All right. But once you start seeing the change in your body and you get into a routine, it, it really do translate to your everyday life. You, Come, you get structure now in your life. So um, I just that's how I am now. And that's how I was then. And you know, when you got structure, you got that mindset, you got discipline. Um, it's easy to stay on course, and as long as guys with you and, and, and you know follow your lead, they do the same thing. So okay, so now take me through L.A. as an L.A. Ram. You know, you've got a couple. <coughs> seasons that were a little tougher than yeah. you know you go on and you get to go to a super bowl and you have some of your best career moments yes. at that point what what kind of led into that how was that um you know also you had a lot going on so yeah. how did you kind of keep your mental strong throughout everything <clears throat> so my first year in st louis I mean, not St. Louis, L.A. in 2016 mm -hmm. was was horrible. It was a bad year. Um, 
We wasn't a good team, and that's the year fishing them getting fired was a hard knocks. It was like it was an embarrassing year. Um, from for per, for individual year, it was an all pro year, Pro Bowl year. But you know, you you when you accomplish that, I'm not saying that you're not happy and excited about that, but you, you just want more as a team. And when you're not even a competitive team and a team that only won four or five games, it's like, what are we doing here? And it became I mean, my agent um, talking to me like, all right. You about to go into your, your your fourth year about time to start talking contracts. I'm like, I don't I, like I love the Rams, but I want to win. I want to go somewhere I can win. So that's like, I don't know if I want to even try to you know come back and get a contract with the Rams. That's like, you sure? I'm like, I just don't. I just want to win. I'm tired of losing. And fish get end up getting fired. They end up bringing Sean McVay in. I remember the first time I met Sean. I remember um, it was Tony. Les and um, Demoff, they all called me up. They was at the um, the, fair, the Four Seasons, matter of fact. It was in a, a conference room. I remember walking in a conference room. Me and Sean always talk about this to this day. I walk in the conference room. They're like, they go, your new coach. And I'm, I'm looking around the room. <laughs> he, the younger, he'd be the youngest head coach in the NFL history at the time. I looked yeah. there. I'm like, okay, ain't no way he's the coach. <laughs> and I looked around like, where the hell he at? The little guy get up, walk to me. Like, How you doing here? I'm like, man, what the? <laughs> like, you just don't know what to expect. And he's like, when they asked me what kind of coach that I always want, I said I want somebody that's gonna hold us accountable and have us get some structure. This that's what I, that's what I told them the type of coach that I would want. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to Sean, he's saying all the right stuff, like, all the stuff you want to hear, all the stuff that I said to them. I was like, it sounds good, but you never know you until never know. you gotta and then you gotta see it to believe it, right? And um, end up you know believing what he what was saying and end up I, actually my first whole year, his first year was my first holdout year, yeah. so. I uh, was trying to come up with a contract after that. I'm like, all right, I'm going to end up coming back. I'm going to see what this guy can do. But um, let, it got to make sense. Let's get paid. It's still a business at the end of the day. Right. Um, and at the end of holding out, I um, was in Pittsburgh training my whole time. And that was my first holiday out here. So for me, it was personal. Right. I was kind of mad at the organization. I'm like, what y'all don't want me? If y'all don't want me, y'all get rid of me. Y send me somewhere that want me, please. If y'all don't want So I was a little, a little mad, a little frustrated about it. Um, end up coming. Um, back the day before the first game of the season, I missed that game. I, I remember going out to Sean's office. He's like, you want to just um, do some pressures? <laughs> a couple third downs? I was like, no. Nah. <laughs> and they're coming back the second game. And, um, you know, that was end up being my uh, my first year. I won a defensive player of the year. Ended up being my first year going to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Experiencing a playoff game, that's that break. That's what changed my football mindset. That, Playing that, Atlanta. Atlanta yeah. at the Coliseum, it was packed, it was loud, it was rocking in there. I remember the like my excitement. I remember my, hugging my dad, like watch this. Like I was just, I was like this. <laughs> I, just, I, like, I was just so amped up, so much excitement, yes. like with the, just feeding off the crowd, the environment. Um, I remember like the first play. Poof, Get back to I'm chasing around. <laughs> you better throw the ball. <laughs> I remember like we, it was three and out, but I remember going to the sideline. Like, I couldn't breathe. I was just like I remember Ease, one of a guy I played with one of my best friends to this day, um, Dominic Easley. He's like, bro, just calm down, bro. Just breathe. Just do the same thing you've been doing. I was just so amped up, but I, I just felt like after the first play, I just was like, you know, but but that's when I realized like. This is what you train for. This is what you work for. It ain't about the individual accolades. It's about getting to that point. They're playing big games like that. You know, regular season is good, but playoff football is different. The speed right. of the game different. The atmosphere is different. Everything's just, it's just different. And that's what, like, after that season, I was like, oh, I was so hungry to get back to the playoff game and do more now. Um, end up holding out again. Yes. 18. And um, that year, uh, I was just holding out, training. I knew how to handle myself then, you know, how, what to do, how to keep my routine, working with my trainer, Dwayne Brown, guy I've been working with since high school. Mm -hmm. um, Lifting weights every day, training with him every day. Um, got an amazing shape. That's when my body started to change. My body started to tone. I started getting a four pass. That's when I started to show my ass on the internet a lot more. Um, end up coming back. Um, but that, that that in 18, I didn't take it as personal. I wasn't mad. I was like, it's just business. We gonna, we'll figure it out at the end of the day. Um, came back in, in 18, and, and I wasn't worried about winning you no know, individual accolades. It was just all about dominating, doing everything I can to help my team to get back to a playoff game and, and do more. Right. And, and and it was it was a fun year for us. I think we dominated. We went on like I think we went eight and zero straight. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we was just an unstoppable team. Offense is scoring a, a million points a game. <laughs> we get the pass rush all game. We getting sacks. Of, 
I ended up finishing the year with 20 and a half sacks, another yeah. defensive player of the year, back to back, unanimous all pro, yeah. pro bowl year. And then we go to we go to a Super Bowl that year. I'm like, this is what it's about. So um getting experience that getting experience with all the stuff that come with a Super Bowl. I was like, man, what? You got all do all these damn interviews. We just play football and yes. like it was a lot that came with it and that I didn't understand. But um we ended up falling short, man, and um that was that was a tough time for me, um, I, and definitely for that 18 year alone, because I was going through a lot off the field mm -hmm. um, in my personal life that was tough, and obviously that's when you know you helped me with a lot of that. Um, you know, just a lot of personal things that was going off off the field. Um, but you know, um, we went to a Super Bowl, we lost. It was an emotional time for me. Um, I feel I feel like I I don't like to say, it, but I kind of went like through a little depression stage, I guess you can say. Um, not just because of how we losing, but a lot of stuff that was just going on. It was just like piling on the top of each other. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What did Tom Brady say to you after that Super Bowl? I got to look at that. I got to look <laughs> at the message. But he just was saying he didn't get to see me after the game. Um, he was just saying um, how, how hell of a football player you are. Um, just respect type of yeah. thing and just saying you'll get you one. Just keep working kind of thing. You'll, you'll be at another one. And um, For me, you know, after I accomplished a lot, you know, by that time, I was two defensive player of the years, a couple of all pros, went to a Super Bowl. Like, my main focus was just to try to win one. Right. And, you know, I wasn't, I was, early in my career, I would look at guys' stats and trying to chase stats and things like that. But um, after losing that, I was like, only thing I'm chasing is like, only person that motivated me was Tom Brady, mm -hmm. you know, a guy that won at that time six Super Bowls. Um, you know, I was just trying to, you know, find a way to, experience one and one, you know, so I kind of hated Tom Brady for like two years yes. after that. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I did. Um, so, um, yeah, it was tough though, but he, he showed some love to me. Okay. And so holding out, let's jump into that just for a minute. You held out for two, two off seasons. Two years back to back. Two years back to back. Why? And what was the importance of holding out for you? Well, you got to understand, like, Football is football, but at the end of the day, it's still a business, right? right. So um, I still got a family to provide for, and, you know, it's a small window. You never know what can happen playing this game, um, what can happen with injury-wise, or just you just never know. So um, while you're hot, you got to get it while you're hot, right? And I felt like I did a lot for the organization. I was working my butt off. I felt like I had a, a lot more in the tank to do a lot more for the organization, so let's just get this on and, and extend it, and let's not even worry about the business side and just worry about football. So... Um, that was what it was for me, man. And, um, you know, just trying to put my family in the position and not to worry about certain things no more. So, um, have an opportunity to, to end up getting my contract in 2018 and to call my mom and dad. Like, I remember calling them, like, what you doing? I remember, I think I called my dad first, like, what you doing, dad? Nothing, man, what you doing, eh? Nothing at the house. Um, you can hang them up now, man. They ain't going to me now, you know. I just got my contract. You can retire, man. They ain't going to me now. You good. I said, what? Said, you good, man. It's on me. I uh, got called. My mom did the same thing. So, uh, for me, that's what it was about, you know, because obviously my mom and dad birthed me, yeah. put me into this world. But um, growing up in, in Lincoln, Limington, um, you know, with a lot of friends I had, got a lot of trouble. I had friends that was murdered. It's easy to get yourself in trouble when you got structure, though and people in your life that keep you on the right track, that keep you motivated, that keep, make sure that you're doing everything you need to do so you ain't a, a victim in these streets. Um, saying thank you ain't enough when you got great parents, right? So um, I felt like to be able to call them and tell them, you know, you can hang your, cle hang your shoes <laughs> up, you ain't got to worry about when the next dollar coming, it's on me now. Um, it wasn't no better feeling than that. You know, I, I was. it felt good to do that, you know, so thinking about it, get a little emotional, mm -hmm. but it felt good to do that. At the time, do you think that interior D linemen were underappreciated? Do you feel like you had to work harder to get that big contract than a quarterback, a, a skill player, a yeah. wide out, you know, just, just anything else? Do you feel like you had other challenges against you other than just performing well and being at the top of your game and maybe the best of the best at the time? Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to – obviously the defensive line was different as an interior guy, you right. know. 
an interior guy really ain't the guy that's going to get all the sacks. You know, he, he's a guy that's going to get five sacks a year, six sacks a year, maybe ten at, at his best. But you ain't going to see a defensive lineman, D-tackle, getting 15, 12 sacks consistently, and then he get 20 and a half sacks. So it's like, you know, you, you help change the game when you're thinking about the aspect of that because an interior guy is closer to the quarterback. So right. if you get that one-on-one, it's, it's easier to get to him, you know, better than a, than an edge rusher or an outside lineman that's rushing off the edge. It's a lot. It's a it's a lot more. You, I gotta go through definitely when you have a name. Now you're getting doubled and triple teams. The, the tackle choking down with the guard sliding and the center runner hitting your hip. It's a it's a lot more you gotta do. You gotta battle to get through. Then I got on the edge. Not saying it's not hard out there, but I would rather go through a tackle and a, and a tight end any day than you know three three thirty guys, three hundred thirty pound guys. So so let's talk about that because <laughs> you're an interior guy. And we just talked about double teams. And I'm going to pull up this stat. Despite seeing double teams at over a 60% rate, you ranked second in the NFL in pressures among defensive linemen and among the top 10 of all pass rushers through week 11. You have the most pressures in NFL history. Through 154 games, you have 790. In addition to all of your awards, mm -hmm. you Pro Bowl every year, all Pro 8. Only time you didn't get it was your rookie year and the year you were injured. I want to pull up the percentages of double teams. 90%. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, at least 60, they lied. It was at least 95%. No, I, I have it on here, but I wanted to pull year. it on there. Sorry, oh, hold on. Since 2017, you faced 1,797 double teams. How many triple teams? Hold on. They don't They don't pull up that oh, okay, stat, okay. but they need to, and they even need to talk about quadruple teams yeah. when people check down and choke down and all that. But 152 more than anyone else in the defensive field, yet you still led all defensive tackles in pass rush win rate. Your last five seasons is 202. While we're talking about stats, your third in sacks – amongst active players with 111. You were the fastest de-tackle to reach 100 sacks. And we talked about this just, it was either earlier this week or whatever, where everybody else on that list is not an interior guy yeah. at all. So just for that alone, you get compared all the time to edge rushers to guys on the to exterior guys not interior guys but does that frustrate you or do you think that people understand what you have to battle with versus what somebody on the edge has to battle with or how the positions are completely different no nah, don't frustrate me it's like you gotta think i'm a i'm a defensive tackle it's like a different world and when you a defensive tackle, you got the world talking about the greatest of all time, and he might be the greatest of all time. You talk about Lawrence Taylor and all these great players. It's like, if anything, it's a compliment to me. It's like, because how many defensive tackles you know that's you know being compared with an outside linebacker? It's like every single year. You know, it ain't even about the interior guys no more. Not to say they're not great and good players, but it's like this guy is doing things that's never been seen as a defensive tackle. So. That's trying to compare him with some of the greatest edge rushers that did it. And I just feel like it's just a testament of my body of work that I did, right? The, the um, you know, the nonstop in the weight room, the nonstop conditioning of my body, the nonstop in the film room, um, the time and the effort that I put into football was all year round. Every single year I've been playing in the National Football League. It's not like I'm a guy that take two weeks off. If anything, I might take a week off. And that week I'm still in the weight room probably once or twice that week. So... Um, when you put the body of work in, it, and good things come off, like my dad told me all my life, hard work pays off. When you put that body of work in, it's going to show. And, and when I did what I needed to do, um, played the game how I needed to play the game. Um, I left it every, left everything I had out there every single week, every day. Um, if that was even in a meeting room, at practice, or in a game, you know, I, I went to work. I, I did what I needed to do. I played fast, played a thousand miles per hour, and then. You know, and, and everything fell in place I was supposed to fall in place, so. Okay, so to make this known, normally when you talk about that stuff, 
you normally say, I play. I'm actively doing this. You just said, I played. I did everything I needed to do. Where are we now? Um, 10 years, um, 10 Pro Bowls, 8 All Pros, 3 Defensive Player of the Years. And Rookie Defensive Player of the Year. Rookie of the Year. Um, two NFC Championships, three NFC West Championships. I went to two Super Bowls, won one, lost one. Um, I'm complete. I'm full. Um, I think the passion to play the game is no longer there for me. I will always love football, but to think about going through another camp and another 17 season, I just don't got the, the urge to want to push myself to do that no more. I'm just, I'm burned out. You know, if anything, I just, the best way to say that I'm full, I'm complete. I'm satisfied with what I was able to do in 10 years. And um, I think it's time for me to, at 32 years old, to retire from football and, you know, jump into the next step of my career and my life. And, and that's time to move on. Did you accomplish everything in your career that you ever dreamed? Um, I accomplished everything and more than I even thought was possible. Um, I, coming to the NFL, I just wanted to, you know, get there and be the best defensive tackle. But um, to be considered the best player in the National Football League, to be considered the best defense player in the National Football League, to win as many individual accolades as I did and win. I just, it's just, I just feel like it's nothing I didn't get to feel as an individual success to team success. I feel every low and every high mm -hmm. that I can feel from the game of football. Uh, was able to make a, a good amount of money playing this game, um, to be able to provide for my family. So it's like, um, you know, when you talk about that, I, I, I dream big dreams. I had huge dreams, but I surpassed anything that I thought was possible. Um, not saying I didn't believe it, but I, I just thought my dreams was big. I just, from just working my ass off and putting the body at work, and it just, it just jumped 20 times above what I thought was even possible. So um, I'm just, I'm at peace, you know, and I kind of, I knew I was going to retire, um, but, you know, after that Detroit game, walking off the field, you know, I'm usually, after a loss, a playoff loss, I'm usually the guy that's going to be mad, don't talk to me, don't look at me. But I walked off the field with a smile on my face, like just taking it all in. I remember waving at you, blowing kisses at y'all, waving at the fans, hugging Coach Henny, talking to Kev, walking off. I remember walking, before we walked in the locker room, giving Sean with a big smile on my, a big hug. He said, that's it. I said, that's it. And, you know, I kind of, I was at peace with it. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't mad. I wasn't, I was proud how them guys played. I was proud how this last season even came to fruition for me. It's like, I had a bunch of young guys where I didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I didn't even expect us to be the team we was. And I had a, I had a fun year. Like, I got to enjoy every moment of that year to watch the young guys grow and become the guys of the team and have success and um, be a part of just, taking it all in. You know, that was my main thing going into this season was just to go back to the how I was as a kid, just enjoy playing football again. You know, that's what it was. And I feel like I got to do that. And um, I was proud how them guys battled. Um, I felt like we should have won, but we fell short. But I was proud how they they, they, they fought to the last to the last play. And um, I was proud of the way everything play, played out. Um, I was satisfied. I was at peace with everything. And then, you know, I kind of, it just was one of them things where you just know, you know, it wasn't like second guessing it. It was no second guessing it. It was just at peace with it. I remember in the locker room, taking my stuff off. I was Last time I'm going to take my shoulder pads off with my jersey on it again. I'm like, wow. I remember getting on one knee, taking my, untying my spike and just like, dang, just looking around like this the last time I'm going to ever do this. And my eyes just start watering. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, just, I'm just taking every moment in because it was like, it was special to me because I knew, you know, so to be able to, you know, to experience what I experienced um, in 10 years, to accomplish what I accomplished in 10 years, and, um, you know, um, I felt like I was able to help a lot of young guys to, you know, become the players they was and um, just watch the organization grow and help the organization grow to what it was, to what it, we became from a team that went four games to a team that won a Super Bowl to become a team that, is a respected team in this league. And I felt like um, I'm leaving um, at peace um, on my own terms. When I want to leave on top, another all pro year. Um, I felt like if I wanted to play, I could still play the high level. It's just the passion to play the game is no longer there for me. And I feel like um, I'm not leaving a team, like just stay in peace. I think I'm leaving a team and I think 
they got a great young team that's going to have a lot of success. And, you know, I talk to a lot of them young guys, and the they, they know all this. I talked to them a million times and told them that it's y'all time now. You know, it's time for you guys like Kobe to step up and be the leader now, to Puka, you know, to continue to build off what you did. So, um, Ernest, you know, yeah. it's your defense now. You know, I told them that. So, um, to lead a team, I'm leaving the team in good hands with great young guys that's going to do some great things for organization make it even that much better for me to know that, you know, I ain't leaving it in bad in a bad condition. It's in good terms and that good team and I feel like they gonna have a lot of success and I'm just gonna be this time just watching from the sidelines, <laughs> just being a fan now. So So I, I do have to ask, why now? And I and I say that because May 9th, twenty twenty two, do you remember that date? Do you know what I'm gonna say? Uh uh-uh, uh tell me. That was your first retirement letter. Oh, okay. Yes, I remember that. It I said think- <laughs> Please allow this letter to serve as notification <laughs> that I have retired. I, I'm sorry, that I have informed the Los Angeles Rams of my retirement <laughs> from the National Football League, effective as of the date above. So that was written, that was emailed, ready to go. Just not turned in. Just not turned in. <laughs> so, so when I came in the NFL, I was always a guy that was like. I don't want to play forever. Like, I want to be in and out and leave, you know, like Barry Sanders on. Yeah. I always say I'm a Barry Sanders to leave and leave at my, at my, at still at on top. And people are like, why are you retiring now? But like, you know, leave on my own terms. That's pretty much what I wanted to do. And I always said, I'm retiring eight years. I always said that before my, my second year to leave, my first year, I'm like, I'm play eight years and be done. I ended up winning the Super Bowl my eighth year. And I'm like, God, like, this is like, <laughs> Destiny, like, this is supposed to be like this. And I was like, that's it, you know. But um, talking to Sean, he, he kind of, you know, talked to me. and But it was like experiencing winning a Super Bowl was like, it's like it's, it's hard to walk away from after winning a Super Bowl. You want to experience that again because that's like the ultimate high. Like winning the defensive player of the year is cool. It's a blessing. All pros, it's a blessing. It's cool. But that team success being the last team standing, you got Mayweather flying you on his jet to his birthday party. You got all these people calling you. Hey, you want to come pull up? I'm like, it's a, it's different. It's a different type of experience, um, experience, man, that I never got to experience. And it was like, you kind of get addicted to it. You know, it's like, I want to feel that one more time. I just want to feel the confetti falling on me one more time. And, you know, so I talked to Sean and we was able to figure it out. And, and from a business aspect, and um, we got to what was was – you know, mutual from both sides and, you know, chose to come back for two more years, potentially three more years, but I knew it was going to be two more years and they knew that too. Um, but um, did the two years, ended up getting hurt. That um, My first time ever getting hurt in football was, was that 2022? Um, it was, yeah, that 2022. Yeah, 23. so that was my first year in my whole life, my whole career, ever getting injured, having surgery, couldn't, had to sit down for weeks. I'm like, this is... Like it went there. And I was a little depressed days then, you know. It was tough, so But uh, you were also what people don't really understand is you work out all the time. Yeah. So to literally be forced, you'll be like, Oh, this is sore, this is sore. I gotta go work out. I'm like, <laughs> just relax. It was tough to have to sit down for to two, do three weeks. Nothing. And can't you even, could not yeah, do anything. I can't even do no on because you can't let you you got a cast on, you can't let it sweat. I was like, I'm gonna just do some abs real quick. <laughs> But Just then came back and then, you know, um, had the year we had and, you know, I was at peace with everything and um, 2024, 20, 10 years and 32 years old um, with a wife and four kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, got my ready brand that I got that's doing great, um, uh, that I invested in early and, um, you know, the development company we got going, Donald Development Group uh, with you. Me and my uh, older brother, um, that's doing great. Got um, some affordable homes we're working on in, in Pittsburgh area, on Wilkinsburg, 38 units. Um, so that's something that we build, and obviously, AB99 Solutions um, continue to help that grow, can help continue to build that, be able to be more hands on with that now, and um, potential to help that grow just so we can, you know, just not be in the Pittsburgh area, but, you know, expand outside Pittsburgh. So. Um, it's things like that that I look forward to is obviously being able to be home with my family, spend more time with my wife and just be a dad. You know, I, I love being a dad, I love being with my kids. Um, my six month old baby beast, my two year old's a monster. 
my seven year old obsessed with football, so watching him play football, my ten year old daughter artistic and um trying to get her into um you know she continue to do art, continue to do some sports because she's five seven <laughs> and she's ten years old, so and get her into some sports. So just watching my kids grow and um the same effort and time that my parents put into me to get me to where I'm at to live on my dream. I just want to give all that to my kids now. Um, to help them live up their dreams. So um, obviously, um, any opportunities that call and present themselves, if it makes sense to me and my family, I'm all ears. Um, so, um, you know, potentially down the road with some acting stuff, you know, we working on that. So. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm an open book, man. I'm just, anything that come my way, opportunities that's going to come my way, um, I'm all ears, I'm listening. But right now, my main focus for this year is just being a family man, being home with my family, um, continue to work on a ready brand, continue to work on a development company, um, continue to build on 8099 Solutions, and you know that's my main focus for this year, but I'm just excited about being a dad, so. You're stealing all my questions, because I was <laughs> gonna say, what's next, you know? Yeah, that's, that's, but, that, that's but it's it. that. Um, what, what I will say is, oh, an amazing husband, you are, you are just attentive, you're kind when you want to be. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but you, you pay attention to the small details. You really just kind of make sure that everybody is set up for the for success in the sense of you make sure that everybody has what they need to be able to be their best throughout the day. So whether that's me being a mom, you know, working from home, you make sure I've, I've got what I need to be able to do that stuff. Um, the kids, you are the best father. They tell you that all the time my daddy's my best friend they'll, they'll like i don't care about anybody else in this world but my daddy is is the best in the world you know they love you so much um and i think a lot of that is just attributed to how you are how you raise them um and a lot of that comes from obviously how you were raised but everything that you had poured into you you make sure you pour that into everybody else so even when we're going through seasons and you are coming home from work, no days off, you're working out, you're doing treatment, you're taking two or three hours out of your day to really be a dad, make sure kids have their homework done, you're playing with the young ones, then you go back and you do, you finish up your film study because you do that for hours and you're in bed by maybe 11 p.m. or midnight yeah. and then you're up at 6 a.m. maybe earlier doing it all over again so outside of football i don't think people really understand what you pour into your family and how much you love your family and you like everybody for sure has made a lot of sacrifices so you can be your best and do what you need to do but you also throughout your day when you are laser focused on the main thing you take time out of your day to make sure that you pour into everybody else around you, even if you're tired, even if you're cranky, <laughs> even if you don't want to do it. So, like, when people talk about family man, you are, I may be biased, I don't know, <laughs> but you are the epitome of family man, you know? And I, I say that, and I know that because I grew up in an amazing family. You grew up in an amazing family. So we were able to see those really positive mm -hmm. examples of what now we can pass on to our children. And so I just think that is so special of you and how, you know, you'll give up going to events or even some big moments yeah. to just be home with your kids yeah. and play with your kids and spend time with your kids and be like, I'm going to be late because I want to put them to bed yeah. or, you know, or, I don't really want to do that tonight because we're just going to stay here yeah. and we're going to watch a movie and everybody's going to sleep in the room, you know, like you, you really are that. So I don't tell you all the time, Thank you, baby. <laughs> but I just felt like that's important for you to know, but also for other people, other fans to know that's who Aaron Donald is, you know, Out, outside of everything you did on the field, that's who you are. And so with that, I'm just going to jump and say you had a lot of positive role models. We kind of talked about this a little bit, but you pour so much into the community and you do so much for young kids, a lot of it unnoticed and unknown. Um, but what does that mean for you to be able to do that and potentially, you know, 
be that role model for somebody coming up. And it's not just in sports or football because exactly. there's guys and young guys that we talk about or just young kids in general, male, female, where you're like, oh, they could be a great NFL player or a college player or whatever, but it's not just about yeah. that. You know, they can go be a scientist. Their grades are awesome. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You tell people to keep a good head on their shoulders. But what is that for you, being able to be that role model and that influence on the next generation? Well, I think having an opportunity to be who I am as a football player and be able to, um, for these kids to look up to me, right? So um, when I speak, they listen. So um, they had an opportunity to motivate so many kids um, to inspire so many kids um, and be a guy that they can see and they can touch, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it ain't just on TV. I'm, I, I can joke with them. I put them in the headlock. <laughs> yes. I'm just me, right? Yes. So I want them to see that and I want them to feel that. I want them to understand that you, when you put the body of working, the things that you can accomplish. And it ain't, a, it ain't just about sports because if you put your time and your effort into anything in this world, it, beyond sports, that's just trying to become a teacher, become a a doctor, you, if you really put the time and the effort into that, I learned that from my father, that you can surpass anything that's possible. Like, I, I, like I told you, I dream big, but I surpass things that I, like, from just working. And I really put time into that, effort into that. So to be able to share that with these kids and show my emotions to these kids and let them know that I'm a real person, you know, that um, anything you put your mind to is possible, right? So... Because um, a, a lot of these kids now, you, a lot of people speak to them, but they ain't going to listen, you know. But um, for me to have that opportunity to, to catch their ear and for them to sit there and listen to me and look me in my eyes and, and feel what I'm saying is real. Um, because everything I speak is always from the heart. You know, I hate when somebody trying to put a card in front of me and tell me to read this. I be like, no, let me just <laughs> ask me a question and I'm going to just speak from my heart. Because right. that's, that's, that's when it's more real. That's when people can feel and relate to it a little different. So... Um, to do that, man, and to grow up in an environment I grew up in and see my friends that had so much potential that chose to go a different way that end up going to jail, that chose to try to bring them to somebody's house that they get murdered, you know, just hanging with them the day before and I get a call from another friend saying, so-and-so just got killed. Like, these guys could have been in the same position I was in. They had all the potential in the world to do anything in this world, but they chose to go right instead of going left the right way, right? So, um, you know... My, my main focus is try to help as many kids as I can in a positive way to motivate them as, as much as I can so we can just continue to build our community up the right way, right? So, um, and ain't just athletes we see come out of the community. It's doctors, it's teachers, it's scientists, it might be astronauts. Because when you see people that come from where you come from that make it and they was in the same type of environment you was in that make it no matter... And everybody's situation is different. Like, I was blessed to have a mom and dad and had structure. Everybody don't got that. That's why I want to create my foundation. That's why I created my foundation to have that mentoring, that, that leadership, that tutoring, so they can have some discipline, that structure. Somebody be like, man, what are you doing? You don't need to be, what are you doing? In school? Like, like a, kind of like a smack upside the head, you know? And um, when you got that, somebody, you know, it's, it's easy to keep somebody on track. Because many times where I wanted to go this way, and I thought about my dad, like, nope, <laughs> I'm going to go to school. Like, you know, I'm going to do what I need to do because I don't want to make that man mad or disappoint my family at all, you know. Because uh, I remember my dad told me, um, I ain't got much to give you, but you got that last name. You better not embarrass it. And um, I felt like I did pretty good, you know, helping this last name, that Donald name, um, grow to what it is today. And, and my mindset is, you know, for, to help the next kid to do that for them and their family. So... Um, any way I can help them, help these kids, help the next generation, that's what it's about. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, it's a blessing um, to be where I'm at. Um, but it's it's more of a blessing to have an impact on these kids that I have. So I'm um, just going to continue to um, do my part regardless of what's going on and motivating these kids any way I can in a positive way to stay on track. So. What sort of legacy do you want to leave behind, both on and off the field? Well, for me, legacy is everything. Um, you know, when you when you talk about, you know, nobody lives forever, right? Um, so my mindset was always, I want my last name 
I want my our name to be let, like to live forever kind of thing. And you create all springs of that. But I'm talking about as far as like having an opportunity to to put my name down pit the weight room, the Aaron Donald's performance center. That's going when I'm when it's all said and done and I'm gone. That's always going to be there. That's my name. That's going our last name is going to last forever. When you walk, you're going to see that Donald name right there forever. When we we creating this development company, we doing these great things for these for these communities and building these things like that. When it's all said and done and I'm gone, my kids are gonna have an opportunity to help help this grow. That's 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 forever. That's legacy. When you you talking about now being in a position to continue to build and, and create generational wealth, because it ain't just about us now. It's about our kids and their kids and their kids and their kids to the point where the Donald last name. It's like the Crunky family, you know, <laughs> yeah. honestly, yeah. you know, that's, that, that's, it's, it's wealth, yes. you know, and I love Mr. Crunky. All the time I see, I say, you know, you adopted me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will always love and appreciate the Crunky family, Mr. Crunky, um, because they changed our lives, right? So um, it's a, it's a blessing, man. It's like, sometimes it's surreal. Sometimes I can't believe, um, where we at today, where I'm at today, um, and the things I'm able to build and do and grow. But, um, you know, that, that's a part of life. You know, I got the opportunity to play 10 years in the NFL now. At 32 years old, retiring, I'm really really starting starting life now yeah. at 32 years old. So I feel like I got a, a great head start in life. Now it's time to really anchor down and, and get to working. You know, the next chapter, uh, I'm excited about the next chapter. And, um all the things that come with that and um, the future, what the future hold for us and for me, uh, I'm just ready for it. I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, it's, it's not no, it's not a sad day. It's a celebration. Um, having a nice little drink, with a, a mimosa. That's it, just a mimosa. But you know, you usually drink champagne when you're celebrating something. So um, this ain't a sad day. This is just a celebration. Um, memories and. Um, Think about all the great times, the great things you did, all the great things I'm going to do in the future, and just look forward to that. So, okay, so talk about greatest of all time, right? You are a first ballot Hall of Famer. Do you think you're a first ballot Hall of Famer? In my mind, you are. So let me be clear. I say that. What are your thoughts on that? Not to sound cocky or not, but I think from what I accomplished in ten years and the things I was able to do, I will agree to that. I think so. Um, humbly, I would say that. But, <laughs> I do believe that, um, you know, you, you look at some of the greatest defensive tackles that did it, I felt like, not to sit, like Warren Sapp, John Randall's in the world. Um, um, I think that um, the things that I was able to do in 10 years as a defensive tackle consistently year in and year out um, for 10 years straight um, speak volumes, right? Um, I think I helped make a change in the lead to the point where you can be 6'1", 260 pounds. Because I played, in 2018, I played 255 to 260 that whole season. If people don't know that. Everybody think I'm 285. I ain't, be too, I ain't been 285 since... College. No, no, college. But my first year in the league, I was about 280. My second year was 280. But for the most part, I've been playing NFL football as a defensive tackle in the National Football League at 6'1". Probably 260, 265. Sometimes I played at 258. Depending. Taking on 600 pounds. Yes. So you, you, it ain't about the size. And I, but I'm actually, I'm really strong too. So <laughs> that helped a lot hold the double teams. But um, yeah, man. So um, I think I helped change the game. And, you know, teams looking for the next Aaron Donald, so, so to speak. Just, you know, it ain't about being a guy that 6'5, 300 pounds, you can still dominate at 6'1, 6 six foot. Um, 280 pounds, 270 pounds, 260 pounds, as long as you can hold your own when, when them double teams come, because they be heavy sometimes. But um, as long as you can do what you do and, and you're a productive player, man, I, I think I help, you know, shine a light on guys that's similar to my body type to be out there and, and, and get drafted and teams that have to second guess it. So, Do you think quarterbacks are going to be happy? <laughs> I don't know. You got to ask them. <laughs> I know I'm tired of um, the doubles and triple teams every single play, though, but um, it comes with the respect of the game, right? So, um, you know, to have to battle through that week in and week out, you know, study film and, like, okay, 
I see the one-on-one. -on -one. I know if I get the one-on-one, -on -one, how to beat this guy, but let's be realistic. I'm going to worry about this guy, this guy coming. How can I defeat it? Uh, the study of the game like that, um, it come with a lot. Football, it ain't just Sundays what people see, man. It's, it's a lot of film study through the week. Uh, definitely at 30 plus years old. As you get older in this league, it's a lot of you got to do to take care of your body. So it's like when you go home, you're really not home. You know, you come home, I try to spend time with the family for a minute, then I go watch film. Then I go spend time with the family for a minute. Then I get in the cold tub. I spend time with the family. Then I get in the steam room, the sauna. Then I spend time with the family. And then it's at nighttime when the kids is in bed, I got the game ready on my knees or I got the boots on. And then 1130 at night, bedtime, I'm ready to do it all over again. So it's a real commitment with football. And um, definitely as you get older, you got to find a way to keep yourself fresh, keep yourself healthy. And it's a lot of recovery stuff you got to do at home. It's like, it's, it's like, it's the same thing every day and they get old, but it's what you got to do to be able to stay stay fresh, stay ready to, you know, play a football game and, and be able to dominate because um, if you, it, it sucked to go into a game and you got aches and pains. So it's a lot better when you're feeling good, your mental's good, and you're able to just go out there um, and just trying to find ways to make plays. So um, it's a lot that go to it, people, that the world don't know, the world don't get to see. Um, but football's a real job. It's a real commitment. Um, it's a lot that go into it, man, and um, I had the opportunity to do it 10 years strong um, and, and put a lot of time, a lot of effort into it. Um, Off-season wasn't off-seasons to me. No. Um, really didn't get to travel a lot. Um, only times I had was the weekend, and, you know, that's, you know, that's one day, and then it's right back to work, so... Um, it was a real commitment, a real effort, a real a lot of time that I put into the game of football that's like, you know, to say that, um, do I think I'm the greatest of all time? I, I wouldn't, I can't say that, but I can say I'm one of the greatest of all time for sure, I think. So, um, yeah, I don't think there would be too many arguments with that about me saying that. Um, I respect all the greats that came before me um, that was able to change the game, but you know, the game changed so much, the era's changed, and um, I'm done. It's going to be the next, you know, whoever is going to be the next best guy that's going to do it consistently. And um, there's going to be another guy after that and another guy after that. That's just how the, how the, how this um, league works. So. so 20 and a half sacks. As a defensive tackle. As a defensive tackle. Like, I don't know. I had a bunch of TFLs that year, too. Yes. Should you have been NFL MVP? And... How do you feel about the NFL MVP award? Well, in my opinion, I think that, and, I, and it's not no shade, but I think that MVP award, it should be more like like the, the, the best quarterback award because, like, there's a lot of great quarterbacks, don't get me wrong, but every single year I don't think the best player is the quarterback. I feel like in 2018, I felt like I wasn't, I wasn't, I promised to God I wasn't trying to win it. I didn't care about right. it, but if it was a chance for me to win the MVP, it, it should have been that year because – you got 20 and a half sets as defensive tackle, probably like 20 plus TFLs, and then I helped take my team to a Super Bowl. It was like, it was like a no-brainer, unanimous All-Pro year. It was like, but I don't think it's a award for a defensive player, or like I think it's just a quarterback award. And I say that with almost you know, respect. Yeah, yes. I don't like ain't no shade to nobody because mm -hmm. there's a, so many great players, but there's guys that dominate that deserve an MVP or award that's not a quarterback some some years and it's like you might always just don't call it the the don't make it the best player in the league. Just say the top quarterback in the right. National Football League. They gotta change that award if they're gonna do it like that because right. every year's not a quarterback. I know them I know they the money guys, but come on man. It's like Is there anybody out there right now where you're like, that could be the next Aaron Donald? I know you not don't next, really not like the next Aaron Donald, watch. the next the next but I would I would say T J Watt. He's a guy that consistently been doing it. Yeah. Every single year, and like he's a guy that's going to consistently get fifteen sacks for you, twenty TFLs, probably two interceptions, maybe a, a touchdown for sure. So he's a guy that's been doing it consistently. That I felt like you know he should have won a couple more defensive players, and he, he kind of got snubbed a couple of times. I ain't gonna lie, but um, you know if you talk about somebody, I'm because I'm big on you. Got to show me more than one or two years. Yes. You got to it. Got to be. It ain't no. He dominated one year, got that now. It's like, what are you doing now? It's right. like, you got to be like, not two years. It got to be like, I got to see it multiple times. You got to be consistent when I watch you. So, 
Uh, he consistently dominate year in and year out. So that's a guy I felt like, um, if anybody, they need to be chasing him and trying to, you know, if they want to look at stats and trying to accomplish something, I would wait. Look, wait, what did TJ do this day? Uh, he had three sacks. Damn, I got to try to get three and a half sacks, four sacks this yes. week. So um, he, he, he's, that, he's that guy right now, I think. Okay, last one. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I just thought about it. You said TJ Watt, Steelers. Every time we are in Pittsburgh, people will walk up and be like, hey, man, when you coming home? Like, what's up? You going to put on that black and gold? You know, like, you from here? Uh, I, I, I love the Rams. Um, I, I don't want to, you know, retire nowhere else but with the Rams. You know, I told Sean when he first got there, after that first year, I was like, um, you know, as long as you're the head coach here, I want to be here. I want to continue to win as many games and, and create a, what we can create together. I don't want to go nowhere else but here with you. And I got the opportunity to do that um, because the relationship, the bond we got, I feel like it's special. It's beyond football. Um, again, we talked about earlier, um, you know, all the personal stuff that was going on. Yeah. He helped me with a lot of stuff too, yeah. you know, and, and never asked second get. It was like, okay, that's always first before football. Yes. And, so even if it was a phone call, you, you good? Or he just called me to the office just to check on me. And, and like, for me, that's that's yeah. way deeper than football. That's like, that's real love right mm -hmm. there. So, um, you know, I wouldn't want to be playing for another coach than that guy right there. So, And so I, I do have to ask this because you just, you talk about the Kroenke family. Um, in addition to the many teams he's a part of, you were able to be drafted to a franchise, play 10 years with that franchise, and retire with that franchise. That's rare, very rare. So when you talked about kind of going through first contract negotiations and you were like, I just wanna win. Yeah. I don't know if I wanna be here, you know? Like, I, I wanna go somewhere to win. And then Coach McVay comes in. What does that mean to be able to be able to stay in a place for the entirety of your career when some guys have to jump around. Yeah. They maybe come in as a rookie, but they don't get their big contract with that team. But I, I think that's what made it that much more special, winning the Super Bowl. Um, I remember hugging Mr. Kronk and telling him, that's what y'all brought me here for. I remember hugging Les and saying, this is what y'all drafted me here for, to accomplish something like this. So um, to come to an organization where the first three years we ain't even a competitive team. We got all the talent in the world. We're a good team, but we won in five games, six games. We're not really a competitive team. And to help build that to a playoff team, to a team that make it to a Super Bowl, that falls short, but find a way to get back and win it and, and succeed and have success and get the experience that with with the fans, with the organization, and then with the, with my family, I, like I'm, I'm so happy. Happy thing played out for me in my career. I'm happy that I, I chose to stay with the Rams and be with the Rams. The Rams wanted me and um, to have the success I had. To just, to, just, to, it, I think that made it that much more sweet, man. Because um, when you help build something and you felt like a couple of times you you was hammering away, you missed a nail, but you found the way to keep it, continue to build that house and, and get that structure the right way and, and help build it up the right way, man. And, it's just, it's a blessing. That's that's the best way. God is great. Um, you, you believe in God. Um, you 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 do things the right way. I remember um, Mike Dicker, we was, we was at an event. I think I was coming out of college, right? And he was talking. And he said, if you respect this game and you play this game the right way, um, the football gods reward you. I remember that always stuck with me. My dad just talked about me, talked to me about that upstairs. And and I remember him saying that. I remember him orange face because he, he lived in Florida, so you know he all tanned up. And I remember him talking about that, and um, I, I, that always stuck with me. I always felt like if you do the right things and you play this game the right way, and you respect this game. The football gods is real. They're gonna reward you, and you know I, I truly believe that because I'm a living testimony of saying when you do things the right way, you really put the work in, what come out of it. So. Um, it was a it was a one hell of a career, something that I can be proud of, um, something that I can continue to look back and show my kids, um, old highlights, <laughs> old memories. You've already started. Yeah, <laughs> but you know I'm just really looking forward to um, you know just watching them 
be great at whatever they want to be great at now and putting all my time and my and putting my effort into them. And, you know, like my dad, from little league to high school, even in camp, early in camp, because I was at home in Pitt, did not miss one practice with that. Every single practice, if I had a bad practice, he'd look at me like, you practice the way you play. You know, you you, you half fast at practice, you're going to half fast in the game. And that always stuck with me. That's why I, at practice I go 100 miles per hour. I'm dominating. There's times when Sean had to take me out of practice. Like, yeah, man, like, chill out. killing our confidence. <laughs> what the hell is you doing? Because that's the way I was, my dad just like, you ain't, we don't have fans. If we going to do it, we going to do it. We going to go balls out. We going to go all the way in with it. And right. um, that's the approach I always had with it. And um, when you do that, man, it's like, it's crazy, right? So now we, we, we. We're looking at 10 years. I remember just being a rookie, though. That's, time flies, man. It do. But um, I enjoyed every moment of it. Um, the experience I got, um, the relationships I built, um, the memories I got with my teammates, this relationship that you're going to have for the rest of your life, relationships I got with the coaches that's going to last forever, um, Coach Henny, um, Sean, um, Coach Raw, now head coach for the Falcons, my dog. Congratulations. I'm proud of him. So you, you build relationships like that, that's, that's forever, right? Um, teammates, that's Michael Brockers that we still talk to, Foxy, um, guys like that, man. It's like Eugene Sims, Robert Quinn, Rock, Chris Long, we still talk. Um, so I still talk to these guys that my rookie year, we still got a group text, we text. So um, these is bonds and brotherhoods that that's last forever. And them is, that's what it's about, man, memories and relationships that's like that. and. Um, football did so much great things for me, man. And, you know, I can't thank the game of football enough. Um, I can't thank the organization, the Rams organization enough. Can't thank Mr. Kroenke enough um, for, you know, um, not just having me the opportunity to help build the organization, but, you know. Keeping you there. You know, keeping me there <laughs> and, and helping me, you know, um, you know, change my life financially and my family's life financially forever and putting us in a position where we can continue to, um, had our financial thing grow and invest in certain things or create our own um, lane and, and path now. So um, I'm forever grateful, forever blessed, and um, I'm just in an amazing place, happy, proud, you know, all the emotions is that's like I'm on like cloud nine. Like I don't know how, to, how else to express how I'm feeling, but just at peace with everything. So, so I know you might not miss OTAs in camp as much, but I think the home opener is September 8th when that comes around and you are I'm there. <laughs> I'm there like and you're this. there and I'm you're like watching. <laughs> like, yeah, the boy, let's go. Uh, but I don't know, I'm gonna be excited, but I, that's what one thing I- What are you gonna I, miss the most? I, I don't know, I don't know. I, I, Sean asked me that, what I'm gonna miss the most, but I, I think I'm gonna miss like the locker room presence or just being with the guys, yeah. like the jokes, all like the, Meeting room, crafting jokes, and like the whole, I'm, I'm gonna miss that a lot. That's how I, I can say that now, but as far as like when the first game come out, I'm gonna feel, I, I don't I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I can't tell you that until I until experience it. Yeah, so, so um, but I can just tell you right now that I'm, I'm excited, I'm happy, and I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm not like second guessing, not like maybe I can, I'm like, I'm cool. To that point, let me be very clear because people are in my DMs and I'm getting messaged all the time and they're like, Please don't make Aaron retire. Please, <laughs> please give him to us another year. Like, I want to make it clear that this was your decision. Yes, my decision. I, I, and I love all the fans. Yeah. I posted stuff on social media with just me dancing. dancing. But it was just, I'm just happy, man. I'm, I'm, I was excited about doing this. excited about finally get to share it with the world that um, I'm retiring. Um, but it wasn't me getting a new contract or us getting <laughs> or a, a new or, edge rush yeah. or getting traded. I don't, I don't know, but um, it was just me just seeing something. I liked that. What was I liked the video I seen, so I put it on my story, and, and it was just how my emotions was feeling at the time, getting ready for this interview. And but, um, tomorrow, with today's Thursday, tomorrow Friday, this will be shared with the world as far as the retirement thing. And are you ready for it? I'm, I'm ready for it, man. I'm just ready, so I'm excited and I'm happy. Any last words? Any thank yous? Any anything else that I, I you... think I feel like I thank everybody. I thank the organization. Um, I thank my my parents, my mom, my dad, uh, my brother, my sister. Um, I thank you. 
uh, for being there for me and helping me get through a lot of tough times and, you know, being my rock. My kids, can't thank my kids enough, just my family, um, friends that was there, coaches. Um, there's so many people to thank, but, you know, everybody that know me know I love you and I appreciate you and um, everything you did to get me to this point to, you know, have the success I had. Um, it's a blessing, so. I'm gonna look at this camera and when the kids watch this and they're old enough to understand your father was the greatest of all time <laughs> okay so let's just be clear he may may be humble and he may just kind of i don't play for, i gotta be i was pretty damn good <laughs> <laughs> but greatest of all time and i'm not biased because i know my sh and i know football so greatest of all time and you guys have the greatest dad of all time oh, thank so. you all right oh you finished it's the day okay